Good evening. Welcome to the Trey Olds Radio Show. I am your host, Trey Olds. My guest today is actor and voice actor, Mr. William Knight. We'll be right with you shortly. My first question to you is, how did you become an actor? How did you get started in the acting business? Well, I really didn't uh, didn't make the choice myself. I, I sort of fell into it. I uh, started out um, uh, on stage in church uh, at, at the age of five years old. I came right out of Sunday school, and uh, and they had me the, uh, doing the uh, Sunday school lesson for the for the uh, eleven o'clock service for the adults. And they stood me up in front of the audience, and they they loved what I did, and uh, they thought I was anointed, uh, as it were. I was. Uh, and it was a four square gospel church. Uh, uh, you probably never you had never heard of her. You're too young. Uh, Amy Simple McPherson was Sister Amy. She was the biggest thing. She was the Betty Davis of the pulpit. She had the biggest Protestant church in uh, in L.A. and probably in the country. Uh, it was the Angelus Temple, which is still going today mm-hmm. uh, here in L.A. So they, she had me come in and preach on the radio and. Uh, one thing led to another in all of her branch churches. She had churches all up and down the state. Wanted me to come and preach. And little by little, I, I was, uh, put me a little suit and I was up on the stage preaching, <laughs> doing Bible verses from memory, uh, cause I couldn't read. I was too young to even read. So, uh, uh, and that was, uh, that was my beginning. I, we toured the country, uh, from, uh, Six years old, we toured up until I was about 13, 14 years old. Uh, and that was my entree into showbiz, so I, I was a performer from a very early age. And uh, so, anyway, I came, I had to, after, uh, after um, uh, an encounter with one of uh, a fan of Sister Amy's, brought her daughter, her young daughter, to see me preaching at a little church in East. So I introduced me. Anyway, I, uh, um, my mom was uh, on the road with my little sister. She was breaking her in to preach. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went and lived with this, call- this woman and her daughter, and I got her daughter pregnant. I was 15 at the time. And uh, so anyway, I had all kinds of things. So I uh, kicked around, never finished high school. I joined the Air Force at 17. Um, my mother signed for me. I went, spent four years in the Air Force. Came out under the GI Bill. I went to, uh, since I'd been on stage all my life, was the main thing I knew. I went to LA City College, LACC, mm-hmm. and uh, went into theater. And um, uh, had, 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 uh, having been uh, so uh, familiar with uh, Shakespeare, or with, uh, with uh, the King James Bible uh, written in iambic pentameter, much like Shakespeare. I was able to handle all the dialogue in uh, Shakespeare plays, and even though I really didn't know anything about Shakespeare, but I had the, the ability and the speaking ability and all to do it. So I started doing a lot of leads in college and uh, a lot of Shakespeare classical theater, and, and as well as modern. And uh, one thing led to another, and I kicked around for a while. Uh, after school, I uh, um, I went. I, I got a regular job at the studios. I started working uh, uh, at Warner Brothers uh, as a grip working behind the camera just, just just for a living. I didn't really want to do it, but a friend of mine got me into the union and we did it, did it for a while. Mm-hmm. Kicked around and did that uh, while I was also doing a little theater around town and uh, chasing little uh, jobs and things. Uh, I finally got a part on, um, uh, uh, in about 68, I got a part in Star Trek, the original Star Trek. Uh, um, oh, yes. And uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. did, did that and Back to, to this day, I uh, that's been fifty years ago, <laughs> and uh, to this day, I have a uh, uh, last year. I got a call from this fellow uh, uh, who does trading cards for you know uh, ball players and various like Star Wars, Star Trek, and so he does trading cards. Mm-hmm. So he called me uh, on the chance I might still be alive because <laughs> this was fifty years ago uh, in the original Star Trek. And, and half the people are dead, of course. Uh, Spock, most of my scenes were with, with Spock, Leonard Nimoy. Yeah. And the, the blonde girl, I forget her name. Uh, uh, he's gone. She's gone. Uh, uh, Doc is gone. Uh, uh, Scotty's gone. And 
and uh, happen well done. And just lucky that I, uh, Shatner and myself and uh, Sulu are the only guys left alive from that show. <laughs> uh, so he luckily found me and called me and said, but I'd be willing to sign some uh, trading cards uh, for uh, Star Trek that can do a series of the original uh, the original Star Trek TV show, which this was the first season that I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Um, and I, yeah, I said, sure. And uh, of course, they paid me for it. And uh, they sent me this big box, 500 and some odd uh, cards. And I had to sign each one individually and had to have someone, you know, photograph me and witness to the fact that it was really me signing them because they sell these things. They were supposed to be authentic. Yeah, and that was a big job. <laughs> anyway, so now at my old age, now I, ha- I have a trading card, the William Knight. Nye- I trading uh, Star Trek trading card. Um, so anyway, I was on that kind of the, during the, uh, the the Star Trek. Well, anyway, right after right after I did Star Trek and I do a lot of other few, few little things. I uh, I got a, I'm still doing theater around town. I, I had my own little theater so back for a while doing uh, Vine in Lexington. It was called the Hollywood Vine Methodist Church, and we built a theater in it. And mm-hmm. we had a lot of really uh, good, uh, you know, some famous actors. Uh, um, we did, did some great work there. We did uh, classics, and we did Tennessee Williams and Strindberg. And uh, anyway, we lost that. They 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 sold the church. So I lost my theater, so I went and auditioned for a play. Uh, uh, since I wasn't involved with my own theater anymore, uh, that was a big hit in New York, off Broadway in New York, called Oak Calcutta. A uh, very famous show that had a lot of nudity, and it was on the cover of Time. So I went and auditioned for it. Uh, and uh, I got cast uh, for the West Coast production in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I did that for about six months. And then they called me from New York. And this was my big entree to go to Broadway. They called me from New York and asked if I'd like to uh, come to New York. They're going to move the show from all the way down on 2nd Avenue up, up to Broadway. And uh, would I, they'd like to have me come and uh, get a recasting and do some of the characters I was cast in doing in San Francisco to come. I said, of course. So uh, I, uh, they flew me to New York and uh, I uh, did the show, did the show for a, a couple of months off Broadway while we were re- 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 reconnoitering, re- uh, reforming it. And then we moved to Broadway. That was uh, 19, uh, what was that? 1970, I think it was. It's, it's, yeah, about 77. Uh, it's hard, boy. Time flies so fast. And uh, we opened up the Belasco Theater uh, uh, that was my big, my first Broadway show, uh, and it played there for uh, a little over three years. Um, big, it was a big hit. Everybody who was in town would come to see it because there was a lot of nudity in it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, there was a famous dance of Adieu that was uh, on the cover of Time magazine for the big fig leaf over it because it was a totally new Adieu. And uh, uh, we had. Uh, so anyway, it was big. I left the show to do uh, uh, about halfway through the run, about a year and a half. I left to do another Broadway show at the Schubert Theater, uh, an evening with Richard Nixon. It was uh, it was by Gore Vidal, the great writer. Uh, uh, Gore Vidal who wrote this. He hated Richard Nixon, and he wrote this play uh, uh, called "An Evening with Richard Nixon." And and I played uh, I played uh, Eisenhower. Uh, I do voices, and I was able to kind of uh, do a. Uh, Eisenhower's voice, and uh, <laughs> me, I, I uh, did, did Eisenhower. We did, I, so I did the evening Richard and accepted Schubert. That was my second Broadway show. Or oh, a little side trick: uh, uh, Susan Sarandon, who's a huge star now, Academy Award winning winner and everything. Oh yeah. She. This was her first Broadway show. This was uh, right after she made the, the famous uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show which uh, is still playing all over somewhere. It's playing somewhere, even now. It's, it's never stopped playing. It's a, it's a cult classic. Mm-hmm. And she was making that about this, around the, over in New Jersey, about the same time we were uh, doing uh, uh, an evening picture of Nixon at the Schubert. And uh, that, that was the only show where I still have a poster from it, where my name comes before it. Susan Sarandon's on the poster. <laughs> because uh, it was her first Broadway show. So I... Uh, Anyway, that was uh, that was a little side side note there, but, uh, uh, and, and and how the things kind of come back together. I just did a picture uh, uh, with her her son, uh, who uh, uh, her and uh, Tim Robbins' son. Uh, he's twenty nine, and he just did a picture uh, called uh, what is it? VHS. 
um, not VHS, but VHS, Y E S, which he shot all on VHS. He shot like about, I don't know, 40 or 50 VHS uh, to make a feature out of it. And, uh, and uh, uh, Tim Robbins is, uh, is in it. Yeah, I did a couple of things with him. And uh, Susan has a, has a small role in it just to help her son. Because he's a, a struggling young filmmaker, and I think that I think that maybe I, I think it's gone to Sundance. So I'm not sure, but anyway, we just just made it about about six months ago. Uh, so there's a little side note. I, I, getting back to uh, Susan Sarandon, so uh, doing a, a picture with her son, uh, things come together. So uh, yeah, so I uh, I stayed in New York, and I did a lot of a lot of a lot of theater in New York. I did 1776. I did uh, the Bonus Army, in which I played General. Mac- MacArthur. Uh, I played a lot of generals. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I played Eisenhower. I played uh, General MacArthur in uh, the Bonus Army, which was a play, a musical about the uh, 1933 veterans' march on Washington. Yeah, uh, and an interesting play. And uh, I played again now out here. I played uh, General uh, Patton in a uh, motivational video for Lockheed. Lockheed Aircraft went into. The, they were going to go into computer business. And they uh, had a, a line of computers that they were going to introduce, and this was a motivational video to make to get to the salesman to to get out and push this uh, computer. So we did a, a the motivational speech. We're going to hold them by the nose and kick their ass about the competition. You know, was that <laughs> famous speech from the from Patton? Uh, we did a take up on that. Anyway, so I played the, the three most famous generals of the 20th century: Eisenhower, MacArthur, and uh, Patton. So uh, and I have played a lot of them in, in films. Uh, I played uh, I played Admiral uh, what was it? Admiral Hayes, I believe, in a picture called Nautilus. Uh, so I, uh, playing generals and admirals, all this big big thing. Uh, one of my things that I play most are authority figures. Now that I have, uh, I'm out here, I came out here. I left New York in '81. I, I married a psychiatrist and moved back to LA. Mm-hmm. Uh, after having spent almost 13 years in, in Manhattan doing theater, I uh, came back out here and had a son. And uh, my uh, my ex-wife, she was my fourth wife, actually, I've been married as my fourth wife. Uh, she uh, was a psychiatrist, and she was out here so, uh, in residence, so I came out here. And uh, had, a, had a baby boy with her, and uh, I slowly started work getting connected back here again. It takes a while. And started doing uh, commercials and things out here and uh, taking care of my little uh, son. I became Mr. Mom for a while. <laughs> and uh, sadly, that son has passed on. He uh, he was 29, seven years ago. He, got, he uh, had an accidental drug overdose. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. About the same, about the same age as Heath he Ledger. Same thing killed him, a little uh, accidental drug overdose. Uh, and my uh, and my wife, I, my, she was my fourth as mother. She died about... Uh, 12 years ago from uh, pancreatitis. She was a bit of an alcoholic. Even though she was a doctor, she should have known better. But uh, she, uh, ah, you know, one of those things, you gotta, she couldn't see the forest, but the trees, Dr. Heal, myself. She uh, passed on, and she was 10 years younger than me. And uh, she's gone, and uh, my son's gone. So I'm a, I'm a widower now. And, uh, uh, and uh, so... Uh, uh, I don't have any, at my age, I don't have any need to get married again. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm out here now doing uh, mostly uh, uh, low budget, a lot of low budget films, uh, uh, videos and uh, this and that. And uh, theater, of course, I love doing theater. I, did, I played uh, I played Scrooge uh, twice here. I, I got involved with this uh, wonderful church called Mosaic. It's a youth ministry. I, I played, they did Christmas Carol one Christmas about three or four years ago. Uh, and they... Uh, they, I played Scrooge, which was a wonderful experience. Everybody, every actor loves that character because he has such an art. You know, he goes from being such a mean old tightwad to a, a loving guy. And I did it again in a new play, uh, Christian Sephoras. Uh, we did a, a play based on uh, War of the Worlds, the Orson Welles radio show that caused such a stir back in the 30s. Oh, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it was a com- it, the play was, it was a comedy, uh, and it was... It was called Stay Tuned, and we did it right here in, uh, in uh, North Hollywood. Uh, and it was it did it as a Christmas show, and it was done as a radio program. And it was this old actor and myself, William uh, uh, Sutton, who does every every Christmas. He does 
a radio program. And it takes place in 1950. He does a radio uh, uh, version of uh, uh, Christmas Carol. He plays, uh, he plays Scrooge. And uh, so the thing was... It was 1950, and television was coming in, and radio was kind of going down. So, in order to boost their ratings and, and try to try to get some excitement going, they say uh, we got this idea from Orson Welles. I forget. So, they had attacks of uh, these uh, monsters attacking.